welcome to the Indomitable Podcast. I'm your host, Dai Cerullo, and today we have another great episode that will leave you inspired. My guest today is the Indomitable Tiffany O'Hearn. Tiffany is an energetic, energetic healer and spiritual guide. Goodness, not enough coffee today, Dai. <laughs> Tiffany works with our body's energy meridians to tap through our triggers, traumas, and decisions while removing blocked energies that can keep us stuck without our knowing. As therapists will often remind us, the issues are in our tissues. Hello, Tiffany. I am so grateful to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this platform and, and, and everything about it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So um, you know what we're going to start with? I'm going to have you talk about yourself a little bit for those who might be potentially running into somebody like you for the first time, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So where do we begin? I, uh, right? <laughs> right? Do we want the long version? So, you know, I have always, I have always known within me that I am not necessarily like the rest. And, you know, I said that to someone last night and they said, well, you're not better than everyone. And I was like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. That's yeah. not what I'm trying to say. But it's in the knowing of my deeper self in yeah. knowing that, you know, I perceive differently, I hear differently, I listen differently. And therefore, mm. it can be very intense, right? Yes. And so we're all on this journey. And hopefully, you know, especially if you're listening to this podcast, your journey is one of healing yes. and becoming the best version of yourself. And listen, the best version of us shifts continuously. Yes. It's yes. not linear, right? No. We look back and go, oh, when I was 35, that was the best version. And it was right? Mm -hmm. And then we continue to age, we continue to have experiences and embody and embrace more. Yes. And then we energetically right within us, we shift. And so, you know, I fell in to this, this way of healing uh, fairly recently, and it is up leveled everything I know about healing and my mm -hmm. own life and, and everything, everything else around it, right? So if we look at who we are, you know, we come into this world, and I say this with all the love and compassion, we are coming into this world, not necessarily pure energetically or emotionally, mm -hmm. because we are carrying the wounds of our ancestors. We are carrying the wounds, if you believe it, of our past lives and our past selves. And yeah. so here's this beautiful opportunity that we have every day to become a better version of ourselves. Yes. And so with this new energy healing that I'm doing, it is, speaks profoundly to that. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, the biggest highlight, right, is when we talk about traumas and triggers, if you have a trauma, right, mm -hmm. I could be your best friend. And you say, right. you know, listen, when I was four years old, you know, my dad left and didn't look back. And right. I'm like, what? That's a, that's a trauma. Mm -hmm. And it is mm -hmm. because in those moments, especially when we're young, we make decisions. And so in your mind, you might look back and say, he doesn't love me. Mm. And subconsciously, we keep that in our head. Mm -hmm. Keep that in our physical body. We keep that within us. Yes. And so throughout the rest of our lives or until we face it and understand it and go, yeah, actually, I made that decision. It doesn't serve me anymore. And right. now I want to clear it because, again, if you believe, I'm always open to what people believe, but, you mm -hmm. know, Vander Kessel, oh gosh, he writes a book. Uh, actually, he's from Boston as well. And he wrote a book called The Body Keeps Score. And I think yes. it speaks so fantastically to this because our organs store our trauma. Mm -hmm. And so if we can energetically remove them, right? And if we think about when we feel bad. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll be having a great day and then mm -hmm. one little thing, right? Just, mm -hmm. you know, totally derails me. Yes. And it's in that one moment where we, we can reflect inwards and understand that our energy just got shut down. Something mm -hmm. within us has a block, right? Mm -hmm. Like a waterfall, right? There's a dam, there's yes. a log there. And so being curious with yourself and oh, so kind and loving because we always, I feel need to be as kind and loving as we can with ourselves of course. and saying, okay. This no longer serves me. Yeah. Now we can remove it. Absolutely. And then it will never bother you again. You know, I often talk about grief with this, right? Because grief is something we all feel. We've all had people pass. Mm -hmm. And I had one of my clients say to me, no, 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 I don't want to clear the person who passed away. And I said, why? And they said, because I want to remember them. And I said, oh, yes. no, no, no. We're not taking away the memory. Right. We're taking away that nervous system response. We're taking away that energy that stops when you think about that person that passed away. Yes. And what it should look like is, hmm, you know, my father passed away. I'm going to look at a picture of him. 
I miss him. I love you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're going to move on. Yes. That's how we should see grief. Yes. And when we don't, there's some block within us. Mm -hmm. There's some energetic block. And so we're not removing things from your body. Well, I don't want to be vulnerable anymore. Okay. So we're just going to clear that. It's not yeah. exactly like that, right? Yeah. We're inviting right. it back in. We're inviting your energies to continuously flow in a world and in a, in a, in a body of traumas and triggers. And I say that with all the love that I can, because unfortunately or fortunately, right, they're all opportunities as I see them. Absolutely. I, um, I heard somebody say one time that grief was just love with nowhere to go. And it reminded me of how many people I have had um, that I've spoken to over my lifetime because, you know, people find you when you're, you know, people like us, right? So how many people I've spoken to over my lifetime who are grieving, who have specifically either lost a parent or lost a child, which is absolutely the worst of all. Um, and you realize that they have very much made their grief part of their identity. And I don't mean that in a in a condescending way. I mean that in a way where you realize that they have to make it part of who they are because they're afraid to forget. They're afraid to let go of it. They're afraid it will be gone. And it's just, it's so hard to watch people have to suffer in order to feel like they will remember. And that right. that's really one of the saddest presentations of grief that I've seen in, in, in what I do is, is just people who are so scared to feel okay because they're afraid that they will lose that connection with that loss if they don't, if they don't heal it, if they don't let go of the suffering, if they don't let go of the pain associated with it. Because you can remember, I mean, I lost the most important person in my life when I was about 20 years old, and I had never had a mother, but I had my great grandmother. And when when she passed without letting me know that she was sick, I was absolutely heartbroken. I talk about it in my book, and I was absolutely devastated at her loss. But what I want and what she would want is not for me to feel that pain every single day to feel connected with her, but instead to feel connected with her and feel the love that she poured into me when she was with me. So that's how I sort of maintain that connection. And I am not here to tell anybody who's had a child pass how they should do their thing. Any day that you get up is more than I can even imagine doing. But when it comes to grief, I have recognized that sometimes we hold on to the suffering and the pain just to feel closer. That's such a beautiful point. And it really speaks to the work that I'm doing. And the reason is, right? So we go back to that car experience. We go back to mm. your grandmother or your great grandmother yes, passing and that wound that you feel. And it feels very real, right? Yeah. And it is. And here's the thing. Just like you said, our subconscious is constantly taking in information, whether we want it to or not. So yes. if we, you know, you say to yourself, my grandmother passed, you know, I'm so upset about that. There's another wound underneath that. Yes. And so if we can yes. find that other wound underneath that, right, mm -hmm. because that's what it is. And your subconscious likely doesn't want to let go of that. And yeah. so, for instance, you know, out of the wellness center I work out of, there's a, a, another practitioner there who does... Um, you know, shopping and, and helps really people kind of change their diet. And mm -hmm. I said, let's do for the new year, a weight loss. And I said, mm -hmm. here's what my portion of it will be. I want to make sure everyone wants to lose weight. Well, mm -hmm. what do you mean? I said, well, subconsciously yeah. is different than just saying, well, I want to lose weight. And so when we, you know, when I go through and help, you know, you heal. So let's say if it was a weight loss, right, we're mm -hmm. going to tap through the points and make very specific statements to ensure that your subconscious now agrees. I don't like to call it reprogramming because it sounds very harsh and sort of false, mm -hmm. but it is this gentle reminder that okay, I can get through this. And you'll yes. find, I'll find it with my clients all the time, including myself when I'm healing myself. I might make a statement, I want to get over this and it yes. doesn't clear. And it's because my subconscious doesn't really want to. Mm -hmm. And so, and so now, you know, I had gotten into, a, you know, a little mild conflict with my partner. Right. And I said, you know, I don't actually think our subconscious is like collectively want us mm -hmm. to get over this. Well, what mm -hmm. do you mean? And I said, well, if we're used to this situation in our relationship constantly coming up, there is safety in that. Yes. 
And, and now it's like this whole other layer of like, whoa, my subconscious is very literal, right? And yes. so understanding that is also extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can collectively work through, you know, partner issues. Yes. Right? Because yes. most of the time, you know, whether it's a parent, it could be your, you know, a parent and a child. Mm -hmm. And we can work through those collectively because yes. we, we tend to trigger each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> especially yeah. the people that are closest to us. Our children trigger the heck out of us. Mm -hmm. They are meant to because it highlights where we need to heal, right? Yes. And for them as well. And yes. so we can take, you know, collective, you know, a couple, you, two people and, and help to heal that relationship together. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's truly profound the depths that we can go with this, with this healing modality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, once you know what you're here to do and once you start seeing situations that you're being presented with over and over again as an opportunity to learn and grow and an opportunity to change what you've done in the past, Rather, I mean, for just myself, I used to think that every time something came up that was similar to something I'd gone through before, I would blame myself and I would be like, oh, why does this keep happening to me? Why does this keep, you know, why do I keep getting stuck in this? Why do I keep choosing the wrong partners? And I realized I was choosing those things because I was comfortable in the toxicity, right? I was comfortable in the discomfort. I was comfortable in the anxiety. I was, and not... I don't mean comfort. I don't mean comfort in the sense that like every, it felt good. It was comfortable in the sense that I could control my emotions and control my feelings around these behaviors and these types of outcomes. And therefore, I never healed it because I never really felt like that was what was happening to me. So once I got kind of old enough and smart enough and read enough and, and grew enough, I started realizing that all of the things I was being presented with. Um, were things that I hadn't healed yet. And it was so funny becoming a parent, because just as you say, I thought I was completely done with like my trauma around schooling, around how horrible it had been to be a foster kid in school, how horrible it had been to be an ADHD or in school who was constantly being told, you know, um, you're not living up to your potential. You're not trying hard enough. You're not, I know you're smarter than this. You're just not trying. And I had those experiences so um, do so much harm to me and who I was, you know, as a child that once I left school, I was like, okay, cool, that's done. I never have to think about that again. And then of course, along come my kids, especially my daughter looking exactly like me. My kids are both ADHDers too. And I'm just like, oh, and so everything that was happening that I hadn't healed was stuff that was being presented to me again, but with much higher stakes, right? Now they're your children. Now it's not about you getting through it. Now it's about you getting through it and helping them through it. And that's like a part of your heart that you send out in the world every day, even harder because I hadn't dealt with it yet. Nope. You're exactly right. That's such a highlight to, you know, to, to what you're talking about, right? Like, because we have, again, these traumas and triggers, and then we may think, no, that I'm over that. It's no, no I'm done deal. with that. Yeah. Right. And then mm -hmm. your child comes home and says, Hey, the teacher, you know, uh, you know, put me down in front of others and you're, yeah. That's it. and you, yeah. and you become enraged, right? Yes. Because maybe you had a similar experience and that you yes. didn't heal. And so yes. I always invite people to look at your reaction to something because when we mm -hmm. respond to life, there's no trigger, there's no trauma, there's no decision, mm -hmm. previous decision that's been made right. when, when we react to life and or a situation. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, there's information there. There's opportunity there, right? Like yes. if someone in a car cuts you off and you in, get enraged, mm -hmm. yeah. what is it trying to tell you? What is it trying to teach Why? you? Cause I can assure yeah. you that person didn't do that to you on purpose. No, it didn't happen to you. It happened around you, but you're mm -hmm. accepting it as if it happened to you. So mm -hmm. what in that, is it a feeling that nobody ever sees you? Mm. Is that at a feeling that someone's more important than you? Mm -hmm. Right. There's mm -hmm. information there. And Absolutely. so the more that we can be curious and hold ourselves in a place of love, you know, there's one, there's one very pinnacle, you know, process that we use in this healing modality. And it's simply just to take your hands and rub your chest right here and acknowledge mm -hmm. how you're feeling. And it may look something like this, even though that guy just cut me off and I'm so mad. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I still love and accept myself. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't know why he didn't use his blinker and I almost crashed. It's okay. I still love and accept myself. Even though I, I'm feeling this and I don't know why, it's okay. I still love and accept myself because when was the last time that you lovingly acknowledged your feelings and then just accepted them? 
Mm-hmm. Most of the time, we're trying to tell ourselves that we're wrong, bad, or don't think that we have to be high vibe all the time. And that's why when I'm with people, I say, this is where we get intense. This is where yes. if you want to swear, you swear. If you yes. want to say this is so wrong, mm-hmm. then say it. Because we need to address the feelings that come. And the, when yeah. we address them, the beautiful thing is they just move, which is exactly what emotions should do. Feelings, emotions, right? Energy and motion. Right. To have the energy, say, hey, I see you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're mad. It's okay. I love you. Yeah. And then it just goes away. It seems so silly and it is very simple, but here's the thing. It's not easy, right? Until right. we start to invite it, it's actually not that easy. And I want to be very, you know, cautious of, of me suggesting, well, the way to solve your problems is just to acknowledge yeah, them, just, right? You just wave the wand. It's fine. Yeah, no. Right. And it is yeah. that simple, but it yeah. is not that easy. And right. I'm totally open to that in every, I mean, it happens to me too, where, you know what I mean? Where I'm yeah, still not accepting everything. Oh it's just God. a little key. It's just a little invitation to acknowledge where we're at. Yes, absolutely. I've had so many experiences exactly like that. And I think that that's, I think it's so fascinating that we as people, and I don't want to suggest that it's your parents necessarily, but it definitely is sometimes how you were raised because I was sort of raised in a situation where I was always self-rejecting, where I was always telling myself, oh, you're not allowed to have emotions. You have to be nice. You have to, you have to act a certain way. You have to be a certain way. So now that I am in my forties, I just turned 40 this year. And now that I'm here at this place, I'm like, you know what we do now? We don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Now I'm reparenting myself in the way that I parent my kids. And it's, I left that to last, you know, as, as a parent, I left that to last. I left raising myself until absolutely the last thing after I'd considered my kids needs, my partner's needs, every, my community's needs. And now I'm finally at the place where I'm like, I think we're going to, I think we're going to start healing by thinking about how I feel about things, how I am responding to my own emotions. Why is the first thing that I feel to, to, you know, oh, silence myself. Oh, we can't have those emotions. We can't be upset. We can't be, do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people initially self-reject their own feelings first and then deal with the feelings of sort of everybody around them. And I think I, I would say that that's, women especially have a tendency to shut off whatever they're feeling and put themselves last after everybody else. Is that something that you deal with a lot in in your line of work? Are you dealing with kind of a lot of women that are self-rejecting? For sure. There's a lot of self-worth issues. I can almost guarantee, you know, and so so the way that we do it is we do, um, we use muscle testing. So I use your energies when I'm healing you. Mm -hmm. And when we muscle test, right, we're either, we're either getting an expansion which means, oh my gosh, I love, you know, if I say to myself, I love myself and test that, it's strong. I know it's strong. Yes. And I'm not saying it's not with you, but for, mm-hmm. for hypothetical, right? <laughs> you may say that and it's weak. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that's step one. Because yes. if we don't love ourselves, if we don't value ourselves, right. if we don't have self-worth, we're not able to help the people around us mm. as powerfully or as authentically as right. we can. You know, I talk about self-love, uh, you know, I, I, I hopefully, it, well, this will be brought to a TEDx stage, but I like to use a tree. And especially when we think about the feminine, right? Because the feminine, we, we carry the womb. And I just, I almost feel it's more powerful, you know, for the women because of all of our duties and our tasks and our, our sort of oppression, right? Mm, and, yeah. you know, we have this tree. And if we think about self-love, right, the base of our love is the roots and mm-hmm. they're hidden. Right. And our tree can only withstand so much based on our roots, right? So if we right. look at our branches, I don't know about you, but I want to love everyone and everyone. I want to yeah. help them. I want to see them. I want to hold them. Yes. Well, if I don't have that love within me, if mm-hmm. I don't, honor that self-love within me, if I don't nurture and nourish that self-love, the branches will crumble. And mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing in people's lives. Their marriages are falling apart. They don't yes. know what to do with their children. Their friends are leaving them. People are leaving them, right? And it, and, and again, like to your point, well, I keep attracting the people, you know, that are that well, right, because you need to shift within you. So that's in right. every experience and in every interaction, I always say, look inward. And it right. is so easy. And it, mm-hmm. it, it's simple, but it's not easy, right? Because right. that's a hard place to do is to look at yourself and go, wow, Tiffany, what did you do there? We mm-hmm. want to blame the other people. Of course. But there's no opportunity there. Right. There's no, there's no ability for us to heal 
when mm-hmm. we want to blame other people. So it Absolutely. should always be, what do I need to shift? What is in me is attracting the car accident. What mm-hmm. in me is attracting the broken ankle? What mm-hmm. in me is attracting and so on as we go. And the beautiful thing, if we really want to get into it, is our bodies are split up into quadrants between the male and the feminine. Mm-hmm. And so if you tell me your right shoulder hurts, I'm going to say, okay, well, who, which woman in your life has hurt you? Mm-hmm. From my shoulder? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all there. Our body is constantly, our soul, our spirit is constantly providing us messages and where we should go to heal. But then we go, well, my shoulder hurts. I'm just going to go to the doctor. And I get that. I totally get that. Right. Right. But there's also more information there. Yeah. And if we can, again, reflect inwards and get curious to what it is that we're feeling and why, well, that's what we need to heal. And life becomes more beautiful when we start to get rid of the clouds Mm -hmm. of these traumas and triggers. Yeah. Because again, to your point, whether you grew up with your parents, whether you grew up as you did, Mm -hmm. it's very influential time in our life, especially the first seven years. Mm -hmm. So if we say, I'm really struggling with vulnerability, well, we're going to have to look at your childhood. Where were you not able to be shown that vulnerability? And the beautiful thing is I've witnessed people sitting all of a sudden have these miraculous sort of realizations and memories because when we trigger, cause right, that's part of the process is to yes. trigger you in a beautiful way, right? You're being mm-hmm. held, you're safe. You know, you, you want to talk about, you know, the self-worth, well, where does that come from? When was the first time you felt like that? And you'll right. see people go to two years old, three years old, mm-hmm. four years old with very specific things. Well, mm-hmm. when I was four years old, I was hiding under the table and my mom said, get out there now, stop crying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can't cry anymore. My mom can't see my feelings. That's the decision you might've made that speaks directly to your Mm self-worth. And so now you don't know why you don't make time for yourself. You don't take that time, right? Because when you were a child, you needed something different. Yeah. And this was something that was very hard for me at first because I was like, well, wait a minute. If I address my childhood, that means that I didn't think my mom did a good job or um, she didn't really love me. Yes. And I see that a lot too. Yeah. We, yeah. And two things can always be true. This is something I teach my seven year old very mm-hmm. often, right? Mm-hmm. Two things can be true. That's right. I, my mom did the best that she could for me, and mm-hmm. it was not the best for me. Those two things can live in perfect harmony, and there's freedom in them. That's right. I That's still right. love my mom deeply and wholly. Mm-hmm. It's not her fault. She didn't know what she didn't know. It's okay. Right. Yeah. It's okay. Right. But I know I didn't get the love that I needed. So now I need to reflect into my inner child. Mm-hmm. I need to hold that little girl because she wasn't held the way that she needed to. Right. Yes, absolutely. I get that a lot with people who will say to me that, oh, well, you know, they did the best they could. Okay. They did the best they could. Fine. We accept that as real. However, it can also be that you are still a very hurt child on the inside. Both things are real. I've seen so many people not want to say that their parents did any wrong by them and thus self-reject in that way, right? And then you see even deeper sort of problems where you'll sort start seeing like addiction and alcoholism and those sorts of tamping down um, behaviors because they don't want to acknowledge that both things can be real at the same time. It feels like they were raised in sort of households where if you questioned your parents, you didn't love them. If you questioned any, do you know what I mean? It, it feels right. like it's, it's like that's what's at the root of that. And then you just start seeing these really self-oppressive behaviors um, in an effort to not acknowledge that simple truth that has no bearing on whether or not you love your parents. Is that, is that true for you as well? Oh, 100%. You know, I I've heard people, well, how was your, what was your home life like? Well, I had everything I needed. Yeah. I I did this. I did that. I did this. Mm -hmm. But what was your home life like? Well, I had everything I needed. Well, that's great. But you, my parents didn't need me. Yeah. Right. I had physical needs, but the emotional needs. Right. No, they, they likely weren't met because guess what? I don't actually believe that we can meet every one of our child's emotional needs. We can be really good at it. We can be really good at it. But yeah. it would be silly for me to suggest, no, my daughter's going to grow up and have no mommy issues. No, that's right. unfortunately not the case. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. And that's her journey. 
but yes. I'm going to do the very best that I can in of every course. moment that I have in front of me mm -hmm. to be the best parent that I can for her. And that means yes. healing myself. Yes. That means going deeply inwards. That's and, right. <clears throat> you know, it's all just about love, you know, and our parents did the best that they could with what they knew. That is a very true statement, right? right. I, I believe that 100%. I but agree. when we start getting into addictions and things like that, I mean, I got to be honest, when I meet people, I can generally kind of assess where their pain of and wounds course. already are, whether, you know, yes. it's, it's, it surely is a gift um, mm -hmm. that I have. And all I ever think is what happened to you? Yeah. Because I don't think that there's a person walking this planet that is fundamentally bad or wrong. Right. I think to myself, what happened to you? Yes. What happened to you? Yes. And we're yeah. all going to experience it differently. But when yeah. we get into addictions, people who have self-love, and this may be a very triggering statement, and I say it with mm -hmm. such love, people who have an abundant amount of self-love mm -hmm. don't self-deprecate. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And so That's again, there's true. just opportunity there. It's not for me mm -hmm. to suggest that I'm better or anyone else is better. No, it's just an opportunity for you to reflect inwards. Right. Well, I think that when and and just sort of going back to someone saying to you, well, you think you're better than other people. I think that that's fascinating because the thing that is always being presented to me is that I am clearly a mirror for people sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So like they'll see me and they'll say something like, well, what do you think you're better than other people? And that's fascinating to me because I'll be like, nothing I have said has indicated that whatsoever. In fact, if anybody is aware of all of her like it's me. Like I am super aware of all of my BS. I am very aware of everything I need to fix. Like there is not a person on this earth that is thinking about herself and what she can heal more often than I am. So when somebody says to me, oh, what do you think you're better than everybody else? I think, I think that that's like a very specific trigger for them. It is. And that's always very fascinating because I think, wow, that's, that's what, you needed it to be that you needed it to be that so you could dismiss what I'm saying because my presence hurts you. You need to reject my, and I think, I think that's so fascinating. I think people like me and potentially like you have people that will need to reject what we are saying, having nothing to do with us whatsoever. And I mm -hmm. think that that is fascinating. Yeah, it's so interesting that you say that. So I'm also learning uh, astrology and how to read charts. And mm -hmm. um, something that I've come to know about myself is, you know, it, my presence is a lot. Yeah, I am very totally. deep. Same. I am very intense. And yes. I can communicate very profoundly. Right. People right. often find that triggering. So I have had to deal with a lot of hate mm -hmm. towards me. That yes. is very confusing because yes. to know me is to know that I don't, hate is not my vocabulary. Yeah. I, I truly do approach people and everyone with love. If you tell me, if you want to band me up with somebody else and say, well, that person, I'm like, mm, no, I'm going to walk away from this. I, it's just not of me. Course. And so it is, a, it, it can be a limiting, but I, you know, I have to work on that, right? Because they're mm -hmm. not rejecting me. They're rejecting themselves. And they're I say that with themselves. love. It's yes. a mirror. It's highlighted within them, their weaknesses. And so like yeah. you said, right, let's get mm -hmm. curious when someone says that because, yeah. and in my, in my healing energy space, I'm like, oh, we need to tap on that. Yeah. That's a trigger, yeah. right? We need to remove yeah. that from your energetic body. Yes. And because what people say, that's how I help them heal is just by mm -hmm. listening. And they'll say, no, 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 my parents did a great job, but there was this, oh, the butt. Mm -hmm. Let's always listen but. to the yeah. butt. Because yes. if we know anything about a butt, and I'm not talking about a booty this time, right. this time, uh, yeah. this when we time. say butt, we actually dismiss everything that we've said before. Mm -hmm. And so I can say, right, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed this podcast and yes, two different things. That's and right. they are received two different way. Mm -hmm. When someone says butt, we contract. We might not even yeah. physically understand that, but our body is contracting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And yeah. so it exists as an and, right. Yes. It's a beautiful yes. day outside and it's rainy and windy. Mm -hmm. Those two things can exist. It's a beautiful day inside of me. Mm -hmm. While maybe the outside needs a little reprieve. It's okay. Mm -hmm. 
they don't need to they don't need to quarrel right. <laughs> they can live in harmony there's a yin and yang there's a right. yin and yang to everything that we do including Absolutely. who we are inside Absolutely. But friends, um, if you are not actually Tiffany or doing what Tiffany does, if somebody is triggered by you and needs to reject you because of something that's going on with them, that's not your business. Mm -mm. You don't need to worry about that. If somebody, look, I am a lot, right? I, this is all a lot. And that is intentional. It is intentional because when I got to be older, I realized that I wanted people to self-reject. I wanted people to look at me and say, oh no, that's too much and go walking the other way. Every time that happens to me, I think, oh, good for you, Di. Good for you. You know, like I think about if you are not doing energy work or healing work for other people and somebody rejects you, that is not your problem to solve. Just to be clear, I don't want anybody going out here listening to this episode and thinking, oh, you know what? Now I know. Now I know. And I can fix that too. We're not doing that. That's not what we're doing. It's almost the end of 2023, babes. We're not doing that anymore. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no. And you know, that is such a beautiful point, right? That we just need to embrace who we are and truly mind our own business for anything yes. else that exists. Yes. And yes. you can do that with compassion. And Absolutely. right. And so, you know, for instance, my daughter says to me, you know, there was this, you know, boy in her class and my daughter speaks in loving, peaceful ways. And she says, you know, he, he really can be beautiful and he can be so kind. And I mm -hmm. said, but she can't understand why sometimes he acts the way that he does. And I said, honey, mm -hmm. I said, most of the time when we meet people and we really can't understand why they're acting the way that they are, we want right. to get curious about their home life. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean we get involved with their home life. No. It means that we hold that compassion in our heart mm -hmm. and say, I don't know what I don't know. Yes. And wow, I'm not going to allow mm -hmm. poor behavior. Right. towards myself, right. I can still have that space for compassion. Right. And that can be very confusing for mm -hmm. individuals, right? right? We are in a world of people pleasers. We are in a world yes. of, I want this. Especially women. I, I hate to keep saying it, but yep, especially it, women. It especially is so true. diverse people. Yeah. We and people pleasers. Yes. That's right. And we need to establish the pleasing within ourselves because mm -hmm. when we can harness that, we automatically start pleasing other people Absolutely. by virtue of vibrating that love, peace, and joy. And the beautiful thing about this energy work is if I'm clearing stuff from my ancestral trauma, I'm clearing it from my mom. I'm clearing mm -hmm. it from my two sisters. I'm clearing it from my daughter. I'm clearing it from my aunts. Mm -hmm. This truly is a gift. When we yes. can heal what is in us, mm -hmm. it automatically influences energetically those around us. Because yes. if you and your partner are constantly having conflict over the same thing, yes. and then you heal it, you clear that from you. I don't want to control that anymore. Let's, it's, let's say control. Cause like, let's be honest. Cause we, let's want to control yes. everything and everyone. Mm -hmm. And we cannot, right. It's cause that's right. just resistance. So if we can right. clear that resistance, all of a sudden your partner goes, Whoa, they might not say it out loud. Mm -hmm. She's not reacting that same way. Okay. Right. So now I have to find a new way to communicate. And so yeah. not only is it beautiful to heal stuff within you, but by virtue, it helps to shift those around you. Mm -hmm. When you start to clear the trauma with your family, with your children, they yeah. start acting differently because you are energetically vibrating differently. And wow. it really can be a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And the thing that just that even as you were talking, I was taking a note because it reminded me that I came because of how I came up, I had a real problem with control. And the reason for that, I felt like if I controlled everything around me, I could keep myself safe. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is not even just that you can't control everything. It's the fact that you are showing your kids, your people, your family, friends, loved ones, that you need to control things in order to be, in order for them to be okay, in order to that, for them to feel okay. And when that fails, you pass on that anxiety, you pass on that anxiety of not being able to control. So while I have had so many people say things to me like, oh, I didn't hit my kids. My parents hit me and I don't hit my kids. So I, you know, I have broken that, I have broken that, you know, generational trauma. But still for me, especially, 
I was still finding places that I was passing on generational trauma, even though I was not beating my kids. And it came out of control and needing to feel safe through that control. And I will give you an example. My eight-year-old is um, autistic and ADHD. One of the things that is part of what we um what we have in our house is he will have um he will overspend his spoons he will become overstimulated he won't have anything left and he will experience a meltdown and that looks like him needing to throw himself on the floor needing to scream needing to yell needing to like just be held while he cries um and 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 that's definitely something that we love him through but what happened was my 6-year-old daughter tiny die started to try to pull attention, right? When that was happening, she would start asking questions when we were trying to focus on him, or she would need to, you know, start singing or something like that. And I real, and I said, babe, stop. I need, I need to deal with this. Just, just, just be quiet for a second. And then she would, but immediately what I felt like was, oh my God, you have just taught this girl to silence herself around other, like, Ooh, you just did it. You know what I mean? So you're not necessarily, it's, it's just so fascinating to me that even if you think you're dealing with your BS, like even if you think, oh, I'm not beating my kids and I was beaten, look at me go. In fact, there are still places where you will trip over your own experience if you aren't paying attention to it. So at the end of that, I came back to her and I said, babe, I did not mean to tell you that you needed to be quiet. I did not mean to tell you that you needed to be silent when this is happening. It's okay when he has a meltdown. He's safe. We are keeping him safe, keeping him having a safe body. And if you just want to talk to us after that, that would be that would be an even better way to help us all get through that as a family. Like, do you know what I mean? And it can be tiny little things like that in your parenting that you're being triggered to solve because that control for that safety, ooh, that is a tough one to overcome for sure. Well, first of all, I'm celebrating you for witnessing oh, that, you. <laughs> for recognizing that and for undoing it. Because here's the thing that I know, it's okay for us to do the thing to our child. Right. Yes. Well, you know, in this particular Right. In this realm. particular example specifically. <laughs> right. So it's okay for us. Right. As long as we can go back and yes. say, hey, honey, mama, mama's really having a tough time. Yes. I had a tough time this weekend. I had to tell yes. her, I said, listen, sweetheart, it's not you. And I am so sorry that I reacted poorly towards yes. you. Yes. I hope you can forgive me and know that I'm doing everything I can to make sure that doesn't happen again. And right. she says, it's okay, mama. It's no big yeah. deal. Yes. Thank you. I love yeah. you. That hope and open, open, oh, right. Yep. Yes. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Yes. And let's yes. move on. Right. And when yes. we think about control, control is truly an illusion because I exactly. have said, for many years, there is only two things that I feel we can actually control. Our partner, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the two things <laughs> that I think that we can actually control, right? We can only control how we show up. Yes. And how we react. Yes, exactly. Other than that right. is resistance. Yes. And we were in the car the other day. My daughter has, you know, she's, she's struggling with being late. That's very real for her. Mm -hmm. And so there was traffic. And I was like, I totally could get around this. And I said, no, I, I need her yeah. to sit in this discomfort. Mm -hmm. And so she's crying. And I said, sweetheart, what is going on? Well, I'm going to be late. I said, well, what's going to happen? Yeah. And she's like, well, I just don't want to be late. And I said, I totally hear you. And I totally understand. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm here with you in this. But yes. let's, can mama offer you another perspective? The yes. universe is suggesting to us, it is showing us right now that we need to be late for yeah. reasons we don't know. Yeah. And when we cry, when we are, have anxiety, when we have all of these mm -hmm. really hard feelings, it's mm -hmm. resistance. Yes. Right? Yes. And so how do we invite it and still honor our feelings? Mm -hmm. And so I had her do this, even though I feel like we're going to be late, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. I still love and accept okay. myself because we are honoring the emotion. I'm not dismissing the fact that this is really hard for you. Yes. Yes. But I'm suggesting that maybe there's another way that we can see this. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. for me now, especially, you know, I'm, I'm 41 and I'm just kind of a go with the flow. The other day I was at, I was at my daughter's school and, uh, we were doing uh, raffle stuff and, and whatever. So there's this box of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had this cash box and I'm not joking when I say five or six moms, particularly walked by me when I had the open and they said, how are you sitting there with the money like that? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? 
Yeah. And they're like, the money's not facing the same way. I was like, it's not in order either. And they were yeah. like, oh. and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, you're showing me something and I'm, right. I'm, I'm receiving <laughs> like, it with love. Yes. And, and, and what I kept receiving was you're trying to control a box of money and that is causing you what you, you decide to be anxiety. Yes. I can't for the life of me truly right. understand that. I have compassion because there's so much yes. information there. Right. Yes. And then I'm like, yes. can we sit down? Yeah. Let me come, let me take you yes. into my room so I can help you with this money situation. I'm right. We start taking notes. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Because the money is just the yes. surface. But yes. if you're upset yes. about money not being in order and that is causing you anxiety, right. And yes. I'm not dismissing that, right. That's not the ear quotes for that. I'm just, no, right. it's more because people I feel use anxiety and stress uh, as a cover up mm -hmm. to Yes. 99% of whatever else they're feeling. Absolutely. And so for me, it's in those moments that I get super curious and super compassionate to think to myself, well, what happened to you that mm -hmm. we're trying to control the money in this box? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it is with no judgment. I I'm, I'm it's truly from a place of love. Yeah. Me, it's a place of curiosity, like, which yeah. I'm not saying isn't love. I'm just saying like, I'm always just like, oh, like I'm so hyper-focused and human beings are absolutely my hyper-focus. So when something like that will happen, I'm like, oh, okay. I want to hear everything about this now. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if you know that this is why you're doing this. That's so fascinating. You know what I mean? I just, right. I love that. You're, you're, right. you're totally right. It allows you to hold people in a place of love and yeah. also witness witness where they're highlighting their need to heal, but yeah. as a heal and as a healer and right. as, you know, that's not my job right. is to ask people to heal or to highlight right. to them what they need to heal. If they're not asking, right. Right. If like, they're not sitting yes. in the office with me, if they're not right. sitting in the chair across from me, mm -hmm. then truly it is not my opinion. It is not right? Yeah. If I'm yeah. asked, oh, sit down, girlfriend, we'll have a talk. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a coffee. <laughs> right. But if I, and if I'm not asked, that's not my information to give. That's right. And so I, I just give the love that I have in my heart for them. Yeah. And, you know, I hope that someday they're able to meet that resistance with them themselves. Yeah. Because it is an illusion. And what yeah. happens when we have resistance, when we have stress, when we have what we want to call anxiety constantly, we put ourselves in a state of dis ease. Mm -hmm. And what is disease when we put it together? Yeah. It is disease. And I think that everything in our physical body is a manifestation of our emotional body. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, that's tough because honestly, I would say that when I was younger and I could sort of see what was going on with people, I felt like it was my, I must be able to see it so I can help them. Right. So I know that probably a lot of folks that are listening are the type of friend that gives the best advice of any of the friend groups, right? But aren't necessarily at the place yet where we are turning that piercing insight on ourselves, or at least that was very much my experience coming up. So I would see someone going through something and it would be so obvious, right? Because people are largely, unfortunately or fortunately, the same. Like people are a lot the same. So how they react to something, how they are triggered by something is very very, you develop sort of pattern recognition for it, right? But it absolutely, you're totally right. It isn't our job to heal that for them if that's not our relationship, to solve that for them if that's not what we are being asked to do. And and once I realized that, I started saying to myself, Die, that is not our business. Like, that is not my business. I am not here to solve everything, not here to change the world, not here to spend all of my energy solving other people's problems that they don't even want to look at. So, I mean, that was definitely something I overcame in the last couple of years. So I appreciate what you're saying. I, same thing. I have done the same thing. I've had the same conversation with myself. Is what yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. And you know, for me, it's, it's, it's right now in my life. Uh, yes, this is the healing work that I do. And I would love yes. to help you. I would love to guide you through your, to hold you through your process of healing. At the same time, if you're listening to this podcast and I'm just providing you another whisper to your soul mm -hmm. that gets you to that next level of healing. And it might not be today. It might be in a year from now. It might mm -hmm. be in two years from now. Right. But that's what I see this as 
is my ability. And I, you know, when I post on Facebook, when I post on any of my, you know, socials, mm -hmm. yep. it is to continue to be that whisper. Yeah. And whether you choose to have me guide you through it or somebody else, right. it only matters that you listen to those little nudges, those little whispers, right? right? And say right. to my, say to yourself, hmm, I can't keep unhearing the same things that I'm hearing, or I can't right. keep hearing the things that I'm hearing. So right. what is next for me, right? Because mm -hmm. for me, it wasn't like, you know, someone said to me, you know, this year, like, hey, Tiffany, do you want to do this? This energy stuff's for you. Just take the course. You'll be fine. No, no, right. no. This has been a of very course. large progression, a very, of you course. know, it's not just a straight line for me. And so yeah. I have been whispered to, and yes. the difference is, is that I'm listening. Yes. You know, yes. I am listening and the more attuned I come, become within myself, the more that I'm listening. And like, I yes. can't dismiss the fact that we have got some funky things going on energetically with the stars right now and Mercury mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. Point is, <laughs> is that those were all little messages yeah. to me yesterday in permission to allow that depth and allow mm -hmm. my tears and allow an invitation to heal on a greater level instead yeah. of weeping. Why me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Because we are all divinely guided. We are mm -hmm. all beautiful. We are all radiating with love. And the more that we can chip away the box that we have unintentionally mm -hmm. built around ourselves, the more love we receive, the more abundance we receive, the more everything that we receive. Absolutely. You just like loudly demonstrated all the things I've been going through in the past couple of years. So I appreciate the succinctness with which you were able to do that. Um, so as I am always saying, I would love this conversation to go on forever, right. but we need to let Tiffany get back to her important work in this world. So Tiffany, I am sure everyone would love to hear more about how to follow you and get in touch if they want to work with you. So how can they best do that? Sure. Yeah. So I can be found on Facebook, Tiffany O'Hearn. I can be found on uh, tic TikTok and Instagram. Uh, it's life underscore and underscore breath underscore for both of those channels. I also have a website, which is www.lifeandbreath.info. I also am working out of a place in Summers, Connecticut called Nirvana Spa and Wellness. And so I can also be found there. So, you know, even if something was, you know, gently inspiring to you, then I just invite you to follow. Just follow because what I post is about being the best, the next best version of yourself. And as I always say, 1% better. There's not an all or nothing. There's not a no. win. There is not a race. Yes. I will never heal everything inside of me and neither will you. And I say that with love. It's just mm -hmm. about how can my tomorrow be 1% better than yesterday? Absolutely. And um, friends, Tiffany is going to send me all of those links so that they can be in the show notes. So if you are driving while you're listening to this podcast, don't worry, I've got you. I'll have all of that set for you in the show notes. So y'all, thank you for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Indomitable podcast for more incredible stories of humaning. Remember, my new book, Indomitable, A Foster Care Story, is available wherever you get your books and has five star on Goodreads. Thank you to all of my friends who came out to visit me at my latest book signing. It's always so rewarding to see people being impacted by my story and sharing their journeys. If you have an upcoming event you'd like me to bring the Indomitable experience to, please just reach out to us. And finally, as ever, I am so happy to have you here in community with me. And remember, together we are truly indomitable. Have a great week, everybody.